Welcome, I am Dr. Hannan and today's surgical case is a classic example of one of the two types of anterior PVR and that is frontal plane PVR. Frontal plane PVR is in fact a circumferential equatorial ridge shortening of the vitreous that pulls the retina centrally. He is my 52 years old aphakic patient with vision loss for more than 4 months. There was a plan of vitrectomy followed by primary inferior retinectomy and silicon oil. During the surgery, some PFCL slipped under the retina. You will be watching in a moment how I managed that. Later, I had to convert the retinectomy into a full 360 degree instead of inferior only. This was when I noticed retinal folds around optic disc of upward drag retina under heavy liquid possibly reflecting intrinsic shortening of the superior retina. PFCL bubble acts as a third hand and helps in peeling the pre-retinal membranes. You can use a pick, a flute needle or forceps as I am using. The goal is actually to peel them as far anteriorly as safely possible to the posterior edge of the vitreous space. While doing vitrectomy near 12 o'clock meridian, I found a small horseshoe tear. It is possibly the primary one as its configuration typically follows the Linkoff's rule. Another thing to note here is the smoke-like effect of the subretinal fluid coming out of the break into the vitrectomy cutter under vacuum. This is known as Schleden's effect. I normally make retinectomies with the cutter using high cut rate and low vacuum settings. In my experience, it gives me a clean, straight cut line comparable to what one can produce with retinal scissors. And that too in a lesser time.
here I noticed that some PFCL bubble has gained access under the temporal edge of the retina and it is not allowing the retina to flatten completely. At first I tried to aspirate it out with the cutter but failing finally I decided to suck out the pre-retinal heavy liquid first. And then folding the retina using the light pipe, I finally passively aspirated out the last bit of a small bubble of PFCL under the retina. I started off again by re-injecting the PFCL. Being careful, the infusion was stopped and the needle was kept at all times inside the growing PFCL bubble and I was injecting very slowly. But then there they are, the retinal folds. It is probably the shortened superior retina that is not allowing it to flatten smoothly under the PFCL bubble. The only solution now is to aspirate out the PFCL bubble completely, lift off the retinal edge and then inject again a small bubble of PFCL to secure the macular area before completing the superior retinectomy. And with this final injection of PFCL, the retina got smoothly draped in all four quadrants. Four to five rows of laser spots were applied all around. Inferiorly, I rather covered a broader area with the laser in anticipation of the future development of PVR. I always prefer doing a PFCL air exchange before injecting silicon oil rather than doing a direct PFCL oil exchange, although it increases the risk of retinal slippage, but I think it is the only way to confirm the final resting position of the retinal edge under oil. Retinal edge can be pushed more anteriorly under pressure of heavier PFCL when we apply laser. Later, if it retracts posteriorly under oil, then you can be left with laser spots on the bare RPE and retinal edge posterior to them, resulting in non-adhesion and thus pre-detachment. 
so here I could see a perfectly flat retina under air. There's no slippage, no laser on their RPE, it means it has not retracted. It's the perfect endpoint. I normally perform an endo iridectomy in aphicic cases in which I have planned silicone oil tamponade. The patient was instructed to keep a face down posture for two weeks post operatively. Thank you for watching the video.